Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh We continue our last subtopic in chapter 11 The learning outcomes for this subtopic You must be able to describe the short distance and long distance of organic substance Via the phloem and define the sugar source and the sugar sink So what is translocation? Translocation is the transport of organic nutrients in the plant. Now we go, we want to the plant want to transfer the organic nutrients. Previously we just learn on the transportation of water and minerals that occur inside the xylem. Okay, phloem sap is the aqueous solution that is mostly contained of sucrose. So the plant transfer its nutrient in the form of phloem sap. Okay? So this uh, nutrients travel from a sugar source. Okay, the source normally the leaf because the leaf uh, conduct the photosynthesis process. So they produce nutrients or food for the plant, and they will translocate the sugar source to the sugar sink. Sugar sink normally the developing part in the plant. For example, the root cell, uh, tuber the bulb and developing fruits so this is the xylem the structure of xylem which is located alongside with the phloem and beside of the phloem we have here companion cell which also help in the translocation of the nutrient from the source to the phloem so sugar sauce sugar sauce is a plant organ that is a net producer of sugar so it produces sugar normally the mature leaf through the process of photosynthesis meanwhile sugar sink is an organ that is consumer or storer of sugar such as the tuber the bulb okay the root cells and also the fruits so this is the movement of water if you can see in the uh, diagram here it shows that The movement of water in xylem vessel is by negative pressure. Okay? Because negative means from the low concentration to the high concentration. So it's against uh, the norm. Okay? It's against the natural. So that is why it is called negative pressure. And um but for translocation in the phloem or sieve tube Okay, uh, the movement of sucrose or the movement of a sugar is uh, using the positive pressure, meaning from very high concentration gradient to the lower concentration gradient. So, there are two different here. Okay, the, the negative pressure in the vessel xylem and the positive uh, pressure inside the phloem. So this is the process. Uh, the movement of water in xylem using transpiration. Okay, it using the transpiration pull, which pull up the water xylem against the gravity. Okay, so remember how the water can move from the root to the upward. Okay, inside the plant against the gravity by the help of the transpirational cohesion tension mechanism. Okay, please revise on that. Okay, we have the transpirational cohesion tension mechanism that help the water in the xylem to be taken okay against the gravity upward. Okay, but in sieve tube or in phloem, okay, it just use the positive pressure, meaning there is no need of helper in sieve tube. Okay, if you can see the source cell, okay, number two. So cell load the sucrose into companion cell, okay. And the sucrose enter the phloem sieve tube. So this is the phloem sieve tube, and reducing its water potential. So inside of the sieve tube already has water, but when the sucrose enter, okay, meaning the concentration of sucrose here become high. When the concentration of sucrose become high, it reduce the water potential. Okay, water is low here but sucrose is high okay so what happened here the water potential inside of the sieve tube here is low so it caused the water from xylem to be absorbed here 
okay to be taken from xylem into the phloem because of the reducing water potential when the water gets in what happened okay it raised the pressure potential so there is more water when there is more water the pressure will be increased so when there is increase in pressure potential what happened it caused a pressure difference that drive the flow of it pulls so that pressure will pull all together the water and also the sucrose contained inside it to be push downward okay downward to pass through all the sieve tube until it reach the sink cell so that is the process okay just read the step from one to six okay so when the, when the sucrose already goes to the sinks okay to the sink cell or to the developing part okay now the water remaining here so we the plant already has access of water because the sucrose already go to the sink cell so the water remaining will be absorbed back into the xylem so that is the process okay okay sugar must be loaded into sieve tube members before being exposed to sink in many plant species sugar moved by symplastic and apoplastic same goes with xylem they can go through the symplastic and also through the apoplastic okay in many plants phloem loading requires active transport okay most of the plant the movement of sucrose from sieve tube members needs active transport and also this involves the proton pumping and co-transport similar with the xylem okay but in xylem uh, the plant take in h plus and nitrate if you still remember in xylem plant takes in h plus and nitrate to uh, control uh, ph changes okay but in phloem the proton pumping and co-transport also uh, being used to transport the sucrose and also the h plus okay so the presence of h plus okay uh, also will um will stimulate or will um give us uh, effects on the accumulation of the sucrose okay if you can see the description here okay a charismatic mechanism is responsible for the active transport of sucrose into companion cell and sieve tube members the proton pumps generate an h plus gradient which drive sucrose accumulation with the help of a co-transport protein that couples sucrose transport to the diffusion of H plus back into the cell. So the accumulation of sucrose is depending on the presence of the H plus. Okay, this is uh, some study that have been done in angiosperm. Angiosperm is a flowering plant. Any plant that produces flower we call angiosperm. So the researcher has concluded um, that the sap, okay, the sap moved through a sieve tube by bulk flow driven by positive pressure. So this is what I have explained um, previously. Okay, number one, the loading sugar, okay, the green dots, okay, that came from the leaf, okay, into the sieve tube at the source will reduce the water potential inside the sieve tube members. This caused the tube to take up water by osmosis from the xylem this take uptake of water will generate positive pressure that forces the sap to flow along the tube the pressure is relieved by unloading the sugars to the sink cell okay which can be tuber can be bulb can be fruits so the consequent loss of water from the tube at the sink okay when they unload the sugar so the the consequent loss of water from the tube happen at the sink. So in the case of leaf to root translocation, xylem recycle the water from sink to source. Okay. The presence, the pressure flow model explain why phloem sap always flow from sources to sink. So this is about the pressure. Okay, the pressure that is already inside the phloem. So this pressure arises from the um, concentration of the sucrose inside the sieve tube. When there is high concentration of sucrose, the water gradient is lower. 
okay water potential is lower so in order to balance this water from the xylem will be absorbed okay when water from xylem is absorbed into the sieve tube what happened it occasionally increase the pressure inside the sieve tube okay so the pressure inside the sieve tube is increased because of the movement of water from xylem to the sieve tube okay so that creates okay a very high pressure okay that pressure is called positive pressure okay and that pressure will help the movement of this sap to the next sieve tube okay so this experiment has built a strong case for pressure flow as the mechanism of translocation in angiosperm so this um researcher they do some experiment to prove either true that the pressure inside the sieve tube is high okay so they want to know so the experiment is is done like this okay to test the pressure of the hypothesis the researcher used the aphid aphid is a very small organism that fit on the phloem sept an aphid props with a hypodermic like mouth part called a stylet that penetrates the sieve tube member a sieve tube pressure force fit aphid they can be severed from their stylets which serve as step exuding set for hours okay so the result from the experiment okay they sh they have found that the closer the stylet stylet is the the mouth part okay the mouth part of the aphid okay which is um the character is the hypodermic hypodermic okay when there is a very high pressure the hypodermic mouth parts of this aphid can be severed okay can be severed if the the pressure inside the sieve tube element is very uh, high okay the closer the silate to a sugar source the faster the sap float okay so um when the stylet is near to the sugar source the movement of sap flow is very high it means that as the aphid mouth is very near to the sugar source the pressure is very high okay but when the stylet is away or a, a little away from the sugar source the movement of sap is not very high compared to the previous one so it shows that the pressure inside the uh, inside the sieve tube is very high okay so the conclusion the result of such experiment support the pressure flow hypothesis okay so this just an experiment that have been carried out by some researchers in the angiosperm to prove either is it true that the pressure flow hypothesis that uh the theory has been told inside the sieve tube the pressure is very high so this just an experiment and it is found true so these are all the references that you may uh, go through for this chapter okay so that's all for this chapter i hope you can revise at this chapter using your lecture notes and also the video the video that i have already shared